And we're live. What I'm going to show you today is some of the most shocking social secrets that took me 20 years to fully understand. And these are secrets that I knew at a light level, maybe a year into my journey. Knew at a decent level about five years in, 10 years in, pretty good. And 20 years in, I'm just realizing how absolutely insane this stuff is. And every single year that I'm in this, I'm just like, holy shit, what fucking planet do I live on? And what I'm gonna show you is something that is going to make your social results so much more efficient, it is gonna blow your mind, okay? And here's the lead in, okay, here's the hook. Here's the hook to what it is that I'm gonna teach you. There's an old school marketer named Dan Kennedy. This guy made me millions of dollars. Anybody who hasn't studied Dan Kennedy is a fucking moron, okay? You are burning money. You hate money if you didn't study Dan Kennedy. Uh, you want Alex Ramosi, you like him? Who's his guru? Dan Kennedy, okay? Um, I made my first $2 million at age 26. Why? John Carlton and Dan Kennedy. So Dan Kennedy, one of his incredible insights was you can write a book and send it to somebody without a cover, without a fucking logo, and in a paper fucking bag with typos, photocopied and typed out on a typewriter. And that book is likely to sell just as much, if not more, than the book with the fancy cover. And the reason why, okay, oh, oh let me give a second insight too. Um, his other insight was that you could charge $30,000 for that book. <laughs> you know, and you're like, what the fuck? Uh, a, a book in a bag with typos and photocopied and, uh, you know, like, like a, lunch, a lunch bag and it's $30,000 or $100,000 or a million dollars and it's a piece of shit. How does that make any sense? And this was Dan Kennedy's insight. And the reason why was because he learned to cut the fucking fluff like the little t cover of the book or worrying about spelling and he double down, triple down, 10x down on what actually gets people to pay. So in this video, I'm gonna to talk to you about this concept of what actually gets people to pay, and also, more importantly, for our social topic, what is it that gets people to respond to you socially? Whether it's getting a promotion at work, being an ambassador for your brand, getting a date and attraction, networking and making friends, getting in front of a video camera, public speaking, Whatever it is where you wanna be socially attractive, um, what I'm gonna be showing in this video is how to cut the fucking fluff. Let's, let's just cut the bullshit. Like, are you ready to cut the fucking bullshit and stop wasting your fucking time? How many times have you been in a fucking conversation and you're like, I feel like I'm just talking and talking and this is just the dumbest shit I've ever done in my fucking life. It's getting nowhere. It's not penetrating. It's a waste of my time. It's a waste of their fucking time. It's a bunch of fucking bullshit. Like, you ever been talking to a five-year-old and you're having a conversation with a five-year-old and you realize that like all they really want to do is run around a circle, laugh and get some candy. And so you're like, hey, five-year-old, what's up? What's your name? Like, you know, what are your hobbies? And the five-year-old is just like, um, I like to read. Uh, can I have candy? <laughs> right? And you're, and you're like, um, tell me about your day at school. They're like, oh, my teacher uh, taught me how to do a puzzle. Uh, can you chase me? Can we play tag? Right? Like they're just indulging you. But really what they want is you just get to the fucking point of what they actually want. That is what guys like Dan Kennedy understood. It's like, stop this bullshit that nobody cares about. Just get to the fucking point. Just do the thing that actually people care about and cut all the fucking fluff, okay? You ever see those old school videos where I'd show myself doing social interactions um, by not talking at all? I I'm literally not even talking. And you probably see these videos, you're thinking, well, well, he's like the YouTube guy. Like, that's like his job, you know? Kind of like if I went to uh, Cirque du Soleil or some shit, you know? And I'm like, well, you know, they're like the Cirque du Soleil acrobat just knows how to do a triple backflip because like they're the Cirque du Soleil people. These videos are not you watching Cirque du Soleil. These are videos that are as um, impactful as they are that you get a result. It's not about you watching me learn how to do social interactions without talking at all. It's about you doing that. So whatever it is that I do, these are, not, these are not meant to be entertainment videos. They're not that entertaining. It's just me going off. It's meant to be informative, but more importantly, it's meant to be transformational. So make sure that whatever you do, you get a major, major transformation um, out of what it is that we talk about today, okay? Now, I'm gonna give you a couple uh, heads up and a little bit of news. Um, first of all, Higher Purpose Program. This is a completely free course on, on two different things, okay? Higher Purpose Program, it's totally, totally free. Click there right now. We are removing this today. This has been up about two years. We're taking this down today. 
And the reason why we're taking this down is we're going to be subbing it out with something very, very different. But I want to let you know what's inside here. So if you've been wanting to get this and procrastinating it, or if this is your first time hearing it, hop in there now. What it has is, first of all, um, an A to Z understanding of social dynamics. Every single foundational ideas about social skills that you need to know is right inside that program. But also it gives an Owen type version of the summary of the, of the kind of like Tony Robbins-esque type of self-help. You know, Stephen Covey, Tony Robbins, Jim Rohn, um, uh, Brian Tracy. I've got sort of my language and my take on all of those concepts. Um, the most powerful self-help concepts that have taken the world by storm, read by presidents, read by millionaires, billionaires. Um, you'll find that it's kind of like the dumbest people read self-help because they're seminar junkies. They don't do anything with it. And then millionaires and billionaires also read self-help. And then people in the middle have a big ego and they say, I'm not going to learn that. Okay. So you got to decide what you want to be. Dumbass seminar junkie who, who, who watches this does nothing with it because you're fucking stupid. Um, an arrogant piece of shit who's in the middle. You make, si you make six figures, bro. Bravo. Low sevens. Low seven club, y'all. Okay. And so you think that you're above learning self-help or you could do what my hundreds of millions and billionaire clients do and you could watch the fucking program okay we're taking this down www.higherpurposeprogram.com get in there watch the foundations of self-help that anybody who's anybody actually understands it also has a soup to nuts explanation it's basically in these here's what it is in these videos i like to get very very advanced i want to cover weird things about brown paper bags and shit like that right I can't do that in a way that makes sense to you unless you know the, the foundations, the fundamentals. So this is about knowing the foundations and fundamentals so that we can spend an hour talking about a brown paper fucking bag, okay? So this is like, let's get you paid, let's get you social success, let's get you everything you want, and then now you can watch this video not from scarcity but from abundance. Get in there right now. I'm pulling this thing down. We're subbing it out for something very special, but I'd recommend that you watch this. It's been up for two years. This is probably your day to watch it, and it's gone. Other thing that's also gonna be gone, um, this is my last year of touring. Uh, I'm going to be doing a podcast. In fact, I'm going to be beginning some of those podcast S type videos this week. So that's coming even this week, but I'm not going to be able to travel. I I I'm not a uh, three person in one. So I can't like travel the country full time running free seminars. And then also back in LA doing a podcast. I, that just doesn't work. Okay. So I'm going to be cutting off the free events and this will be my last year doing it. Um, if you live in San Francisco, I'm going to be there in about a week, full free two day event minimal sales or promotions in it. It is just a real actual event on how to make a lot of cash, on how to get very, very like insane psycho good socially, how to get very, very spiritually tapped in so you're a very happy person. You're gonna meet an incredible network of people there, people that are very motivated, people that will speak the same language as you. We're gonna have a lot of fun. I'm sure that we'll be out every night going crazy in San Fran. It's just a lot of fun. Meet me in person, get a lot of energy, build a networking group, learn a lot. It'll be the best thing you do this year. And guess what? If it's not the best thing you do this year, you could have your money back, but it's free, okay? So get to San Francisco. San Diego is coming up a couple weeks after that. This will, this will probably be the last time I ever visit these two cities for a free event. And uh, definitely last time I'll ever visit Orlando for a free event. The truth is I'm just going there to teach the 12 people that show up because I want to take my kids to Disneyland. So if you want to come to the smallest event of the year, but it's probably only about two, three hours, uh, come to Orlando. And then the biggest event this year is actually going to be Miami. And that one is going to be hundreds of people, sea of people. That'll be three full days. If you live in Europe, that's probably the one to fly in for. If you live in, L if you live in America, I'd probably fly in for one of these two. You can fly in for one of these two from anywhere. Uh, but the Miami one, we're going to be going crazy at night in South Beach, in Miami, in Brickell, you know, uh, Wynwood, everywhere. Um, and also there's going to be hundreds of people. It's going to be huge events. It's going to be three full days. And then Denver, we've added that. I haven't been to Denver since 2015. I kind of just want to go there with my kids. Um, last year touring, so I added that on. And that'll be a small one, uh, but it'll be a full weekend. So that'll be a really fun one too in Denver. We're actually going to do Charlotte, Nashville, uh, Atlanta after that, and I'm also going there just because of my last year, and I, want to, I actually want to bring my kids to the Georgia Aquarium. I want to bring them all around the National Museums. I want to bring them all around uh, Carolina. So I'm going to do Charlotte, Atlanta, Nashville, and then, of course, we're going to have uh, Honolulu, Chicago, Seattle, Portland, New York, Boston, Philly, D.C., Dallas, Houston, Austin, L.A., and then we're done, and we're done with the free tour. So if you want to make it into a fully free event, make sure that you get into that 
as well, okay? And my recommendation, especially if you're in the smaller cities, sign up right away in case I wind up canceling them, there's not enough people. But also, if you're in a bigger city, sign up so that you're not watching it from out in the hall. Sometimes there's so many people in the room, you wind up watching it from out in the hall if you don't get an early ticket. So I recommend that you get in there right now, and we'll actually begin to send you some really, really cool items as soon as you sign up, okay? Likewise, last time this will ever be up, taking it down today, Program. Foundations of Self-Development, free course. Get that, and let's go. All right, so why is it that Dan Kennedy would get this stupid-ass fucking idea to send you, a, send you a book in a brown paper bag? Like, what's, what's up with that? What it is, if you want to understand it, is it's not a trick that it makes it better in the brown paper bag, okay? It's not better in a brown, in a, in a brown paper bag. He's not, like, trying to pull a fast one on you by selling you a 10K book in a brown paper bag. What it is is that he just, re like... It's literally that he realizes there's no point in a cover and can't be bothered even if it took him five extra minutes. So in a similar way, think about things like, and, and I hate to say this because it's sickening, it's just absolutely disgusting, but think about it within a, within a framework of high fructose corn syrup at some stupid ass Slurpee that you get at 7-Eleven, okay? So, you know, you go to 7-Eleven if you're not from the U.S. It's like a, a bullshit corner store with like a lot of processed food. Super popular. Okay, it's all, it's like every, every other street corner's got a 7-Eleven. Kind of. So, say you go to 7-Eleven and you're thinking to yourself, you know, I've, I'm pretty thirsty. I think I should get a juice that has enzymes, vitamins, uh, polyphenols, flavonoids, and things that would actually be good for my body. Maybe I should go get a juice like that. Now... 7-Eleven, they go get that juice. They put it out and, you know, they see how many, how many sales they get. And then one day, one guy says, you know, instead of growing a vegetable or a fruit and going to all that trouble and, and, and putting it through all this and that and the other thing, why don't we just take a cornfield made out of, with, with weird chemicals in it that kill people probably, I don't know, and, uh, you know, make it genetically modified so we'll we'll alter its genetics, we'll spray it down with enough pesticides to, to kill an elephant, um, you know, and then we'll put a chemical in it, and then we'll put a, you know, red number six inside of it, and then what we'll do is we'll, we'll get a, a polar bear with sunglasses, we'll call it like a freezy, freezy man, and it will have so much sugar in it that it is, it is a, uh, there's a word for this, it's like a hyper, they call it hyper palatable, so it basically just tastes really, really good. Like it hits every last part of the tongue. It's hyper palatable. And it will even be unsatisfying because of the fact that there's no nutrients in it. So they'll never actually be satisfied, which then keeps them chasing more and more of these fucking drinks. And it'll also become addictive because it actually like changes the wiring. So, so it's, it's basically like being in a relationship with like, uh, I don't know, some kind of like abuser that beats you up or something like that. <laughs> you know, it's, it's just disgusting, right? And so they try that right now. That could never work. Like, for sure that would never work, would it? Nobody be dumb enough to drink that shit. Nobody except everybody. And then also the profit margins, instead, instead of like paying, you know, $1.52 bucks to make like a real juice, you could just pay two cents and you make more money. The people get addicted. They're never satisfied. They need more. It's got a really cool color. You can't get a juice of that bright ass red. It's fun. You give it to a kid. The kid likes it. The kid's addicted on it before the time it's even an adult. And it just sells and sells and sells. Now, when they look at this, and, and the thing is, if they don't do this, then the store that does do this gets a higher profit margin, begins to build economies of scale, and runs them out of fucking business. There's probably some company that didn't do that back in the day. And now they're bankrupt because you didn't support them. Now, funny side point. One of the cool things about the internet is that word is starting to spread about health and actually more people are beginning to learn and we're beginning to see restaurants like Sweet Greens become popular, although even a lot of the dressing in that was uh, canola oil. <laughs> like, what the fuck? But, you know, at least it has greens. Um, but uh, it, it, they've been changing that apparently because people complain, but it's been like that a long time. So, you know, like the, the, the Whole Foods hot bar loaded with canola oil, but at least it has like a, some protein in it. So... You know, but nonetheless, you know, if, if I were to go buy, say, uh, Pink's Hot Dog here in L.A., which, which used to have a three-hour lineup, it's, it's like a short lineup now. People are beginning to realize that, that bad food is bad. The word is starting to spread. But for most of the modern era, it didn't spread, right? And that's why uh, things like cigarettes or um, potato chips and all this crap got popular. 
basically marketers did split tests and they realized that there's just certain things that work and certain things that don't. And then they just doubled down and 100 X down on the exact things that work. And they did that in food. So um, that applies to fast food, that applies to regular food. And, um, and by the way, I'm gonna get very deep into this and how this has to do with social skills and to understand how social skills work. But let me give a couple other examples. Um, back in the day, I would listen to rap growing up. Rap, it, came, it mostly came out of New York. Uh, you know, the rappers were incredibly, incredibly lyrical, incredibly, incredibly skilled. You, had, you then had, uh, you know, West Coast rap, Dr. Dre, NWA, Eazy E, uh, Death Row Records. Um, you had uh, the Southern Movement. There, it was incredibly lyrical, right? And later what happened in rap was they realized, why do you need to be hyper lyrical? Maybe just focus on swagger rappers. Maybe just focus on mumble rappers. Nowadays, you have cracked out rappers with face tattoos and that are, that are on like the hardest drugs ever and literally can't even formulate a sentence. Um, many female friends of mine have dated them, uh, but nonetheless, that's kind of what you see, right? So it happened in rap as well. They're just like, why, why do we need to have somebody who's super lyrical and talented when we could just put out a piece of shit and everybody buys it? Likewise, and, and look, they have their, I, I shouldn't say that. I'm, I'm sure they're nice people. If I met them, they, they're cool people. I'm, I'm judging, but I'm just making the point like, it's not, it's not like these guys are sitting there practicing their lyrics, right? Um, you know, it's not like the people that are running dating channels or like, go, like in the modern age are running out to the club 50 hours a week to refine the, their opening mechanics, <laughs> right? No, they're just like, let's bring in a group of people in a podcast, chat them, you know, insult them, make a bunch of clickbait, profit. That's more the way that it goes now. And by the way, I'm not against it. In fact, I'm supportive of a lot of those ideas. I'm just making the point that um, people realize at a certain point that like you can kind of dilute it and it doesn't make that much difference. And um, I mean, other examples, take movies. Uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of movies that are put out that are pretty brilliant and pretty amazing, but other movies, they realize that they don't have to. And this kind of watering down to where they figure out what actually works over time tends to be the norm. For example, um, I haven't been sick in 12 years. I take... You know, I, I, I can't prove that this is what did it. I'm not a doctor. I'm not giving you medical advice. But, you know, I take all sorts of superfoods. It's probably a couple thousand dollars. I, I probably spend, I don't know, maybe five, six grand a month or something like that. I, I don't even know what it is. I'm just throwing that out there. But let's say, for example, I spend five, six K a month on things that are highly, highly good for my body. And I've been sick in 12 years. But then people are taking like, like let's take Adderall or let's take, uh, I mean, I'll resist some of the ones that I can't even talk about here. But it's like, these highly, these like cheap, widely scalable solutions. I mean, did you guys see how relaxed I look at the start of lockdown? I'm just laughing, right? And I've had no problems. So it's just one of these things where like the solution that's kind I mean, you ever see those videos of me and Shane, Shane Tyler Milson, like running through the Adirondack Mountains in uh, upstate New York and, and we're picking like reishi mushroom, chaga mushroom. You ever seen those videos? I don't know if you, could, if you happen to know how to load up this. I have a new guy here today, but if you happen to know how to load up those videos, you could sort of, or do, just say yes or no. Do you know how to load up those videos? Just say yes or no. He doesn't know. Okay. <laughs> so it's one of these things where, you know, like, like finding the wild reishi mushroom or making the grass fed steak, they're just harder solutions, right? So whenever you're absorbing a truth, understand that you have the truth that benefits the individual and the truth that benefits the collective. Okay. So in other words, if you told the truth about a lot of things, a lot of those, and what I'm dropping a major gem at you right now. So I really hope that you're listening because, because this is going to easily fly over your head. Um, there is a truth that benefits an individual, a truth that benefits a collective and the truth of, that typically benefits the individual typically cannot be spoken. There was a period up until about 2013, early 2014 that you could, those days are bye bye And so understand that the truths that you're hearing are largely truths that benefit a collective. Even when you hear about like the four food groups when you're a kid, um, a lot of that was like different lobbies and industries that, that were just petitioning the government to put that in the public education system. So understand that, okay? So you've gotta be looking to yourself like, what is the individual truth? So now let's think about social skills and let's think about an, a truth that benefits an individual versus a truth that benefits a collective, right? So what kind of advice do you get, you know, to the collective? Like, I mean, if I were to speak in a way that collectively um, people would, would say, that is, bravo, ah, love it, right? There's certain things that I could say 
that people would just, uh, you know, they, they would eat it up, right? Because these are truths that benefit the collective. So you've got to ask yourself, when you're getting social advice, is this advice that benefits the collective so that everybody goes, bravo, and it, it's, it has no friction, or is it advice that benefits you as an individual, okay? So what if, you know, let's look at something like learning how to run a social interaction without even talking at all. And, and I've posted videos like this. And I mean, that's just what I've posted. Can you imagine how many hundreds of hours that I've spent doing that over the course of my career? Um, I could show you examples of social interactions where I playfully and hilariously just growl. And I said this to a buddy of mine the other day. I'm like, I'm like I will, in, in a hilarious way, not in a serious way, in a funny way, I'm just gonna growl. And you're gonna have a major win. Watch, I'll do this for you. And just roll up, just growling. And uh, we just had an incredibly positive social interaction from growling. And you know, the person that we were talking to was laughing and just going crazy. And it was really bringing them and my friend closer together. And it's like, silent? Growling? Huh? Right, and that's not something that you can really teach because first of all, the average person is dumb. So if you show them, you know, silent style or growling style, they're gonna do it wrong. And so now, and so if you taught that to a collective, you know, you'd, you'd have like all these people running around, um, you know, just going like, ah, you know, like doing, doing it a, like, like, ah, and suddenly they'd be like, Mer! you know, right? And it would be all wrong. They do it all wrong. And, and you literally walk down the street with everybody doing that. And it would suck because the, the you, you can't, uh, ma individuals can be intelligent. Like if I can meet you in person and we can have a one-on-one -on -one conversation, I can directly show you, then as two intelligent people, we can do it in a way that's playful, in a way that's win-win, in a way that both parties enjoy, in a way that everybody enjoys, because we're two individuals. But you know, you teach that to 100,000 people, there's too many dummies in that group. Like just statistically, there's gonna be like the bottom of the barrel people, which again, I love people, I just wanna help them, but that advice won't help them. But then you've even got average people that just don't really pay attention. They, they didn't fully understand the message. And then now you got a bunch of people that kind of like, either A, you got a bunch of wackos, or B, you got a bunch of people that are kind of in the middle, and they're running around doing it wrong, and it would just be like a total social chaos. So obviously that's not, some, that's not something that would be um, put into a, uh, you know, a collective truth, right? It's more of like a, it's like a one-on-one -on -one conversation. You know, if you meet me and, and let's say you come to my house here in LA and you and I have a conversation, imagine the things that we could talk about, just the, the depth of conversation that we could have compared to, you know, in a large group where people will take it the wrong way and then you've got to constantly correct yourself. Like, well, I mean this, but I don't mean this. And I'm saying this, but I don't mean this. And here's the wrong ways. And like, who here understands, right? And it's just like, you're now pandering the lowest common denominator. So, you know, th there was like this one period back in the day where like you could talk, but that's gone. So I'd really urge you just to meet people in person and pick their brains, okay? Make, do, do that the rest of your life, okay? You want to make millions. You want to be very healthy. You want to be very happy. Look for truths so that you got to probably meet someone in person to get because you ain't gonna if, if 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 you find them here they're probably collectively oriented okay but i'll give you the best i can do now you know going from there let's just go a little bit deeper okay so what dan kennedy did you're saying to yourself what's the secret of the brown paper bag what's the secret of charging more you know what's up with that like what's going on there well i mean and again this is an example i'll use all day this is about a hundred thousand dollar watch it's a piece of shit. It's a green face Rolex Daytona, probably the shittier version sell for about 80 grand, 75 grand, the ni nicer new ones. Sometimes sell for 120, they kind of go up and down. I think the market on fine watches might be down a little bit right now, I don't know. So this watch is a piece of shit, look at it. it okay, if I got an Apple watch, I could throw it on the ground. If I, if I got an Apple watch, it's gonna, it's, gonna, it's gonna read my, I don't know, what do these things read? Like your blood or your sleep, or I don't know what the fuck they read, right? I don't have one. But it's like, they're gonna give you all these readouts. This thing's not even accurate. I gotta wind this thing. I, I literally, like, I gotta like, open this stupid thing up. You wind it, then you, then you move it, then you close it, and then you, uh, you know, then, then you, I can't even, look, I'm having a hard time even closing it. Then you got, then you got to shake, you got to shake it. Cause there's like automatic things in it. And that, you know, and then you put it on, uh, the gold scratch, the gold scratches easily. It's heavy. Um, it's a, a type of, it's a, it's a watch technology that is passe, but it's viewed as an art form, hot horology, right? And so why do, why, why do you have a hundred thousand dollar watch when you can get an Apple watch for $300, right? How did they get money for this? 
So because you hear you hear the thirty thousand dollar book in the paper bag, and you're thinking that's stupid, but then you readily accept a hundred k watch. Why? For example, think about a Lamborghini. I mean, have you ever driven a Lamborghini? Um, they're incredible machines, but they're kind of loud. Um, the door is sort of hard to open. They're kind of hard to sit down in. You're very close to the ground. The back of the Lamborghini goes, you know, like shoots, is it like little flame things shooting out the back or whatever, right? It, it makes you kind of nauseous. It, it you know, the, uh, the, I mean, even the front window is so kind of horizontal that you've got to put in like a protector so that the front dash doesn't get burnt by the sun. It's, it's hundreds of thousands of dollars. And I mean, there's an argument. I mean, I own a, uh, a Chevy that I think is the more enjo enjoy, it's a big one to drive around in a lot of gear. Um, I think that's more enjoyable to drive it than a Lambo, but somehow the Lambo is worth more. So if, if a stupid ass fucking watch or a farting car with a bad door can be high value or a uh, paper bag with typos and a photocopy can be high value, why is it that you think that you are limited in your social success by your looks or your money. How fucking dumb are you? How out of the fucking loop are you? How mentally lazy are you? How one-dimensionally thinking are you? You know what you're looking for? You're looking for an easy, it's like if you said you wanna to learn to play basketball and the only way that you could play basketball would be to be born as Shaquille O'Neal. I wanna be born seven feet tall, so big that I don't have to move, and I, I just want to sit under the net and drop the ball. And, and look, look, I mean, it's all about height in basketball because there's this guy Shaq and he just drops the ball, completely ignoring people who understand what is it that really drives social interactions? What is it that actually drives it? If a P, uh, uh, oh, this watch is expensive because it has gold in it. There's probably a thousand, maybe 2,000 max dollars in gold in the fucking watch and you're dumb enough to believe that this is valuable because of the gold, this is valuable because of other things. If you wanna know exactly how to change your social value, study how Rolex takes a piece of garbage and makes it worth 100K. And this, that's cheap for a Rolex watch. It's not even an expensive Rolex watch. There, there's, there's Audemars Piguet, Patek Philippe's, and all these other brands that would cost a million dollars for a watch, okay? So you don't even get clout wearing this, by the way, in the highest circles or anything like that. This is average. So coming from that standpoint, what, okay, let, let me give you another, I'll, I'll give you another example that I've given before, okay? Another example is this company, I've got some of their stuff, it's called um, uh, Goyard, okay? And I have a Goyard belt and I have a Goyard uh, credit card holder that I use as a wallet, okay? Now, when I go to get the Goyard credit card holder, it's a little wallet about this big, it has a print on it. And I will wait in line, and then I'll go in and a very mean and rude French person who has an accent that I can't understand. And I, je parle français aussi. Je parle français, but I can't understand them. <laughs> they, have a, they have a strangely overly thick French accent. And um, they look at you uh, snobbishly. And then, you know, that billfold that I, or the, the credit card holder that I got that I paid uh, $500 for almost the tax, there's like 10 colors. And I say to them, hey, can you, can you get out all the 10 colors so I can pick the color I want? No. We could not get out 10, we get out three. Pick three you like, and I'll take them out. Uh, bro, just, could you please just give me all 10? I'm just gonna pick one. I gotta get out of here. I, this is after I waited in line. If I'm being honest with you, my staff waited in line. <laughs> okay, I went shopping while my staff waited in line. But the point is, um, my staff's been in line. If I didn't have my staff there, I'd wait in line. And so what happens is, I, I, I can't even see them all at the same time. Why, won't they, why will they make me wait in line, even though there's only two people in the store? Why is there a person with a snobby French accent why will they not show me all 10? Because if you get out all 10 and plot them out, they look low value. You are giving it low value. Okay, so now you go to buy it. They give you a certificate. They give you a box. They give you a bag. I'm just like, look, I don't need this shit. Just give it to me. I'll put it in my pocket. And they, you know they're annoyed by that. Later, you want to laugh? I bought a belt. The belt was worth about a grand. Goyard got to the point that they don't want people to be able to give them $1,000 for a belt because of the fact that they don't want their Goyard print to be on someone's body for less than like five or 10 grand. So they don't want someone who can, they don't want someone who can afford only a thousand to be able to associate to their brand. 
So they won't. Eat, so they stopped making belts the normal way with the Goyard print on the outside. And what they did was they made the Goyard print on the inside and put a plain, shitty-looking brown print on the outside. Okay. Now I bought that belt. I went to Pasquale Leather in LA, which is the best best leather worker here in LA. I had them reverse it. And now I got my fucking Goyard belt because you would have to pay like two, three grand for that online because they're not available anymore because they, they used to have it with the print on the outside. Now I'm like, ha, ha, ha. I trick them into giving me a belt for $1,000. Now that belt is probably made in some Chinese factory, probably costs like $3 to make, could even be less than that. Now, how do they do it? How do they, how do, why, do, why do they make it where I think I'm, I'm gonna take their belt, I'm gonna reverse the fucking belt, and I think I'm winning, ha, 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 um, because I got a belt. Well, let me tell you a couple things that are gonna fuck with your head. What if I told you that this watch, while being you know anywhere from 80 to 120-ish K, this is free. I didn't pay a penny for this. Why didn't I pay a penny for this? Why not? Any, who here in the comments, this is actually live, who here in the comments can tell me why this watch was literally cheaper than an Apple Watch? Why is this watch cheaper than an Apple Watch? Why did I pay nothing for this watch? Why does this watch not, why is it not impressive at all? Why would people even spend a million on a watch? Why? Or the Goyard belt, tell me why. Come on guys, it's not to flex on poor people, although it's true. Why else, why is it free? This is free guys, free. Free, 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 free. This house is free too, in case you didn't figure that out. Why is this free? Come on guys, show me how to think. Come on guys, what do you got? It's not a gift. Come on guys, why is it free? If you, okay, and it's amazing. Looks and money are all that matter, but you don't know why a Rolex watch, you, do, you don't know why a Rolex watch is free. You don't know that you can get a free Rolex watch, but yet you think looks and money are that all that matter in, a social, in social interactions. Shows how limited your knowledge is. You provided people value to get the watch, nope. You're the brand, me as a brand, it's worth more, nope. Suck somebody off for it, nope. Money's not real, nope. Promotion, nope. Exchange of value, nope. Here's, I'm, I'm surprised nobody here knows. Network, no, because you make more money because you have it, no, earned it, no, no, here's why. Because Rolexes hold value. I didn't buy this. Any fucking moron by age 44 has 80 or 100 grand. How many 44 year olds don't have 100 grand saved up? I mean, you'd be pretty off your retirement path if you don't have $100,000 saved up by age 44. So you take 100 grand, you buy the watch, you put it on, get insurance on it, and then, which is nothing, then you wear it, and then when you're done with it, you sell it. And you get the exact same amount of money, and in most cases, with Rolex, a Patek Philippe, or Audemars Piguet, you get more back. That's why some of them are a million bucks. You can go buy a million dollar, look, how many people at age 44, if you're 44 years old, six, six years away from being 50, and you don't have a million dollars saved, you kind of fucked up. You, you really blew your career. If by, if by the time that you've got a gray beard, you don't got a little bit of paper. I go right now, buy a, buy a Patek for a half a million bucks, wear it, I wanna get rid of it, I'll sell it at a profit. You're not paying anything for it because you can get rid of it. The, the Goyard belt, now that I've reversed it, I got it for a G, I could reverse it, sell it for two, three Gs on fucking eBay. In this case, a green dial um, is no longer produced, which means that, that usually the price goes up. And you know what, the price can fall on these things, you can, you, you can lose money on these, no investments guaranteed, but usually by the time this thing went down, probably the whole fucking economy went down anyway. So, but there's never a guarantee, okay? I'm not, I'm not like, you know, making some uh, wealth promise thing here, okay? But a lot of people make money on Rolex watches. So that being the case, it, it's just, it's, you know, it's just whatever, right? It's like, whatever. That is how a rich person thinks in the same way that Dan Kennedy recognizes value. Let me give you another example about the recognition of value, okay? Um, I am robbing myself if I do the dishes. So if, if you're my business partner and I see that you're doing the dishes, I, I should literally call the cops on you, okay? Let me, let me put it this way. If I have a business partner and we have a major business, what is worse, my business partner doing the dishes or a guy in a fucking ski mask walking in with a gun and robbing me for five grand. What is worse? Business partner doing the dishes or a guy in a ski mask and a gun jacking me for five grand. What's worse? Let's think about this, okay? So let's say that your business partner at, at, at say five grand a day, if he's making that, what is that per month times 30? What's five grand times 30? Let's say that that guy is responsible for driving about 150 grand a month in revenue. Now he's also taking two days off. 
for the weekend in a lot of cases. So he, he's actually got to be, it's actually an, a, even more horrible issue than that, right? And he's doing the fucking dishes. Fuck your dishes. Fuck your fucking dishes, okay? Um, no, you don't do the dishes. You hire somebody to do the dishes and then you make the extra money. That's how money's made, right? You basically, you make enough cash, then you have enough cash, and then you hire people underneath you to do shit. That's how rich people think. And this is like the tip of the iceberg. Like this is not even... Uh, this is not even like anything overly complicated. Like this is like grade one level, okay? So let's take that grade one level rich person thinking. Let's apply that on social skills. So we talked about how to have a social interaction not talking at all. How to have a social interaction while growling. Now, what I want you to think about is I want you to think about who has the most success socially. And let me ask you a question. Okay, so, so, so looking at this basic principle that we're looking past the surface, like let's look past the surface, okay? And let's look at what actually works. And by the way, where would be the best place that you could find out what actually works? Be on this live, right inside here. If you're just logging on, www.higherpurposeprogram.com. We are taking this down because we're subbing it out with some pretty crazy shit, but the foundations of personal growth and self-help are right in here. And the foundations of social skills are in here. It's not me rambling in crazy examples like this. I made this so that we can talk about a Goyard belt. Because look, I don't want to make the same video every time super basic, right? I don't want to be like, let's talk about the foundations every single time. Without the foundations, you're fucked. Do you, have you watched the foundations? If you haven't, you're fucked. Once you have the foundations and you have success, then we can talk about a brown paper bag and a watch and a Goyard and the dishes and all that kind of stuff. Then, then, then we can go down a meandering rabbit hole. But I built this. It's, it's very step by step by step by step. It's very simple. It's very straightforward, but very potent. It's the most important stuff on personal growth and social. So get inside Higher Purpose Program. Likewise, uh, very, very, very important. John, savior of haha. -ha. He's dissing your font, bro. <laughs> anyway, and then from there... Um, what are you gonna say about it? You gonna let him get away with that? <laughs> he doesn't care. Okay, and then, and then from there, um, the other thing is uh, get out to a free, I mean, for God's sake, get out to a free event, okay? I run entire, okay, you ever, do, let me ask you a question. You ever pray to God, God, could you help me to make more money? Could you help me to get social skills? Could you help me to be happier? Could you let me a hand? I'm not God. I love God, I'm not God. And God did not yell down at you, hey, little kid. I will help you to make money, okay? God didn't yell down it from the sky. But there's a free event. So www.selfhelpfreetour.com, two full day free event. Uh, Miami's even gonna be three days. Fly in for it, fly in. This will be the last time I'm in San Fran, last time I'm in San Diego, last time I'm in Orlando, last time I'm in Denver. Probably do Miami once in the future, the Miami's huge. But uh, even then, make sure that you come in and fly in because every year is different. Every year is a blast. You know we're going to party after. You know you're going to network. You know you're going to meet the best people. You know you're going to think of a higher paradigm. You know you're going to change your life. You know the free event's going to be the best thing you do all year. There's nothing better than this. I will blow your fucking mind at this thing. There will be energy flowing through this unlike anything you've ever experienced. I'll be pulling you up to the front teaching you public speaking. We'll be partying at nighttime. Get to www.selfoffreetour. San Fran, San Diego, Orlando, Miami. We'll be doing Charlotte, Atlanta, Nashville, Seattle, Portland, Honolulu, Chicago, New York, D.C., Boston, Philly. Uh, we're going to be doing um, Houston, Austin, Dallas. Oh, by the way, I also added New Orleans for later in the year. First and last time doing a, my, me doing a free event in New Orleans. Why? Because I want to bring my kids to see the French Quarter and the alligators. There's the crocodiles, whatever it is, okay? In the bayou. So make sure that you get to those events, okay? Go to those events. Go right now. Get signed up. Start getting engaged and start learning right now, okay? Last time I'm going to be saying it. Now, let's keep going. So let's think a little bit about this. Um, why is it that a garbage watch is 100K? Why is it that you, who may be a garbage person, could be the 100K equivalent? What if you're garbage? What if you're fat? What if you're bald? What if you're old and graying? What if you're short? What if you're not that intelligent? Garbage. Garbage, son! Garbage! I'm sorry about that. And I genuinely desire that you would fix that. 
But what if I told you that by the time that you've, and, and I want you to fix it for you, just like I try to fix my garbage for me. So don't ever let anybody show you a bunch of social skills and say that you don't need to fix your life. You don't got to fix your life for other people. You got to fix your life for one person, you. But as far as other people go, when you can clearly see that the most popular restaurants McDonald's, when you see that the shittiest watch is 100K, when you see that um, you know, uh, a book can sell for, for, for in a brown paper bag, shouldn't you maybe explore what's going on? Shouldn't you begin to ask some deeper questions about what's going on? Shouldn't you begin to understand the machinations behind that? Shouldn't you be versed and an expert in the machinations behind that? Shouldn't you begin to think a little bit more deeply? Because here's what's going to happen. You go to become a good person, you're going to be the equivalent of the book with a really nice cover that sells for $12. That's going to be you. Maybe it's to a mass audience and you're going to get 12 bucks. Now, here's the question. Why is it that the book with the brown paper bag has, you know, is, is it, you know, could sell for tens of thousands? Why is that? The book with the brown paper bag sells for tens of thousands. But somehow the, the book with the nice cover sells for 10 or 12 bucks. Here's why. Here's why. And wake the fuck up if you don't get this. Because the book with the nice cover is commoditized. The book with the nice cover has a preset price because we all know that a book with a nice cover at Barnes and Nobles or Amazon has a, you know, 10 to 30 to $50 price point and you're competing in that market, right? If you go, if you go create a Hollywood level movie, at best that sells for $17 or $28 or something at a movie theater. But if you make a niche digital course that can sell for thousands of dollars, Literally thousands of dollars with a niche digital course. So in a weird way, if, if, if you go to make, for example, a digital course and you make it very gritty, very, very gritty, like no cover, typos, or say it was a video course, it's not with like a million dollars, millions of dollars of special effects. Like as soon as you put millions of dollars of special effects into the video course, there's a set market and expectation for that. And the set market is, it's commoditized, it's for mass distribution. This watch, as soon as this watch begins to compete with Apple Watch, okay, the second that it does, this watch magically can only sell for a couple hundred bucks because now you're competing with Apple and their numbers. But if you put some weird pointless, uh, I mean, I guess it'd be good if the apocalypse happened and there's no batteries because it, it, you could shake it. But, you know, Haute Horology, it is Haute Horology, it's not a watch, it's a piece, a time piece, a time piece, right? Oh, have you seen the piece? And then, you know, you, you, you could look it up on, uh, online, look up watch reviews, right? And they'll like zoom in on the watch, you know, say that it's an AP watch, it's the mega tapisserie, the small tapisserie. Right, it's, it's not a fucking square shape, a square shape print on the Royal Oak. It's mega tapisserie on the piece. Oh, oui, oui, the piece of the grand tapisserie. Right, you ever heard the Emperor Have No Clothes story? It's the grand tapisserie, the blue dial, or the, is it worth more than the black dial? You see, there's literally dial colors changes the price of a watch by, uh, it could be, a, a black dial could be 35K, a blue dial could be 60K, green dials could be way more. It's because of rarity, it's because of scarcity. How scarce are you? Are you scarce? Probably not. So let's think, of, okay, so let's start thinking about the, these machinations a little bit, okay? How do we turn you into, the, how do we get you the social results that you want? And let's, let's just have an honest conversation. About, like, let's stop the bullshit. Let's have an honest conversation. You're not, you're, you're not, Rolex is not gonna beat Apple Watch. They're not gonna out Apple Watch, Apple Watch. If you're not the perfect look, the perfect height, the perfect everything, you're not gonna outdo the person in that lane. That's not your lane. 
You see all these podcasts that talk about six feet, six pack, six figures, six figures, nothing, by the way. That's going to get you results? You're going to be an Apple Watch? That's, that's the go? Become an Apple Watch. That's going to be your angle. Like me, 44 years old, bald, 5'9". I'm going to be an Apple Watch. Like, like I'm, going to, I'm going to somehow watch a podcast. It goes six feet, six figures, six pack, six inches. Oh, do, 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 do. Okay, but I'm going to outdo those guys. I'm going, to, I'm going to out Chad Chad. Yeah? Yeah? Okay. I'm, that's my new goal, to be Chad. Okay. Okay. All right, gotcha. Okay, in fact, Rolex, scrap the brand. AP, scrap the brand. Protect, scrap the brand. Forget about it. Canceled, canceled. We're all going to become Apple Watch now. You're not going to become a fucking Apple Watch. So what you do is you focus on the mechanics that these niche brands use. Here's the thing. The weird mechanic in it is what lets you charge more. The weird fucking printed book with the typos and the bag lets you charge more. Because you're not selling a book. You're selling a bag of fucking legit secrets that will make you millions. And what Dan Kennedy explains is, it's not about the price of the book because now you're selling based on price. And as soon as you're selling based on price, you're fucked. So instead what you do is you, is you sell based on value. Look, it's the same thing. You shouldn't be earning money by the hour. You should be earning money by the result. You could charge any amount for the result. If you charge by the hour, you're stuck in. So you gotta charge by result. Likewise, don't, don't, um, you don't, if you're making a book, don't compete on, I'm gonna try to get shelf space at Barnes Noble and pray you don't get a book advance from Simon Schuster. Okay, we had, a book, we had a book that Jeff put out back in the day. It was called Nine Ball. And we did a, uh, we did a personal release and we did a, ma a major Simon Schuster release. The, the release that we did as a niche one off our website did like, I don't know, was it over a million bucks or something? And then the one that we did with Simon Schuster was like probably a couple hundred grand. We made more off of the niche one. Okay, so it, you know, it's, it's the same idea. Okay, so I mean, you can, some people like say Mark Manson, because uh, he used to be in the community, he, he did uh, Solar Art Not Giving a Fuck, and that went mega huge and that helped him. Um, probably made him a lot more than his book Models did, as an example. But the point is, like, unless, like, are you gonna be Mark Manson? Like, are you gonna be Tucker Max? Like, if you can, ride it. You don't know, ride it, baby. You know, you're a male model, female model, whatever model, ride it, baby. Do the model thing, great. I'm not telling you not to. If you're that thing, like if you happen to be the per, like if you are the Apple Watch, don't become Rolex. Like I'm not gonna go to I'm not gonna go to Tim Cook and be like, you need to learn the, the secrets of Rolex. Where's your tapisserie? You know, I'm not gonna say that to Tim Cook because he is Apple Watch. If you're Apple Watch, then fine. I'm not I'm not the human Apple Watch equivalent. I don't think most of you watching this are the human Apple Watch equivalent. They, you wouldn't need my help if you were. You just go be Apple Watch. Just be hot. Just to be six feet, whatever, right? Just go do that. If that's you, great, amazing, good for you. That's amazing. I applaud you for that. Put your, you can put your efforts elsewhere. But be careful when you see me out. Be careful because when you see me out, I understand these mechanics so well that who you came with may not be who you leave with. Because sometimes you, you walk up to someone, you say you want to trade that Apple Watch for Rolex. A lot of people say yes. So you better be careful when you go out because people who understand this will gank you. And it happens every day that we go out. So I just warn you about that, okay? So I would actually urge you to understand these mechanics. Now, what if I told you, um, let's even go a little bit deeper. Let's go deeper. What if I told you that almost all elements of being socially compelling or people being attracted to you or people wanting to do business with you is based on a lot of these mechanics? I mean, it really is. It, it, it is so much more than you would ever realize. I mean, how many times have you ever had it where maybe you're, um, you know, you have somebody who's deeply, deeply in your life and then you have the frame and they absolutely love you, and then you lose the frame and they hate you. I mean, they just, they, they literally just freaking run off, right? You know what I mean, John? They just, they just literally run off. Stay awake, my man, it's late. <laughs> so it's one of these things where um, they run off. I mean, come on, wake up. Think about your last relationship. You had the frame. What happened as soon as you lost the frame? They went from loving you to hating you. Same person, same person. Same person, lost the frame. Same person, right? Dr. Dre's wife, lost the frame, gone. Tom Brady, lost the frame, gone. Wife's gone. Dr. Dre, Tom Brady, didn't matter. Doesn't matter. Lose the frame, out the door, right? Doesn't matter at all. Ask, ask their ex-wives, what do you think of them? 
loser, idiot, hate that guy. Why? Lost the frame. Rolex does not lose the frame. Goyard does not lose the frame. Do you lose the frame? Dan Kennedy, expensive ass book in the paperback, will not lose the frame. Won't deal with you if you, if you don't abide by his frame, right? So let's start, to think, let's start thinking about this a little bit more carefully, right? So there's two different reasons why and the mechanic, okay, so actually let me give one last example. You could be a chiropractor or massage therapist and there's usually a set rate for that. Best chiropractor I've ever seen in my life. I think he charged me, uh, it's, it's a guy in uh, uh, Miami South Beach. His name is Moyal, M-O-Y-A-L. He used to be in, uh, by uh, South Beach and later moved to, uh, to uh, Coral Gable or whatever it is, right? Look up Moyal, M-O-Y-A-L. I think he charged about 125 bucks per adjustment. Wish that guy lived in LA. I paid, pay him for it every time. The best chiropractor is only $125 per adjustment. Man, that sucks. Now you go to the joint, you pay $25 if you got a package. Um, so yeah, he's the best. He got, instead of 25, he got 125. He was able to get a multiple of five. Way to go, Moyal, baby. 5X, baby. 5X, baby. Yeah. Can't pay the bills with 5X. So you got to think a little bit deeper here. Okay, he's paying 5X. whoop dee whoop dee whoop whoop dee whoop dee whoop whoop dee whoop dee whoop We got 5X, whoop dee whoop dee whoop Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Think outside the bun. <laughs> okay, like Taco Bell. Think outside the bun. So he got 5X. Why? Because he's the best. The fucking best got 5X. What if that guy right now went and got some weird fucking like, I don't know, he got like uh, like some, some like licorice root, some dried licorice root. And then he went, blah, 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 blah. I summon the spirit of the licorice. Blah, blah, the licorice root brings forth the spirit. Now lie down, lie down, and wait for Moyal to give the spiritual licorice adjustment. But it's not an adjustment of the spine, it is an adjustment of the soul. Uh, bah, 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 bah. And then his eyes start rolling in the back of his head and Moyal's going crazy. Well now you got all those housewives in coral fucking gables and you're charging them $10,000 per adjustment. And you know why? You didn't get a multiple of five, you got a lot more. And you wanna know why that is? Because there's no set price point for it. And the more fucking stupid it looks, the more fucking crazy it looks, the more that you assume it's gotta have value, because how the fuck could he be doing this shit if it didn't? Get a little bit of social proof, off to the races. That's gotta be you in your social interaction. Right, look at me, right? And, and I live this shit. I got some stupid ass beard. I'm completely unhinged and hilarious when I'm out. Say any fucking shit that comes out of my mouth. Like, uh, never underestimate how funny you can get when you're out. I mean, you should know how to go out and socially be so funny that people are rolling around on the ground. Now, you say to me, how do I do that? How, Owen, how do I do that? Notice how I've showed you this in countless videos. And I show you, and I show you, and I show you, and I show you, but you still don't get it, do you? I've showed you this, but you don't get it. Here, let me refresh your memory. Have you ever seen a seminar video from me where I say that I will cause everybody in front of me to break out laughing without even talking? You ever see me do that? And then I look at them and I go like that, and I make this funny look in my eyes, and then the, like half the room just starts laughing. Look, if you think this is hard, how fucking dumb are you? Look up Benny Hinn, okay? Look up Benny Hinn. He's like a Christian preacher. And he goes, whoa, oh, oh. And then he, and by the way, I'm a Christian, but let's be honest. Betty Ann goes, oh, oh, oh. And like he's Kenner Ryu, he pulls out his jacket and goes like this, and the whole row of people pass out. And there's entire groups of preachers like this. They're awesome, by the way. I want to go to one of those things. I'd love to go to one of those things. I'd like to be the preacher doing that. You know why? They have a great experience. They really do. Well, look. How much cooler is, is a, how much cooler would be going to a church like that than one where you don't pass out, where one where he doesn't wave his jacket and everyone goes flying. I would so rather go to the church where everyone goes flying. Look, I like to make my seminars fucking crazy because it's fun. <laughs> I want to make it fucking fun. So I do that kind of stuff. But if Benny Hinn, look up Benny Hinn. Okay, it's too bad. I don't mind my regular guy here. I'll be showing this on the screen. Look up Benny Hinn. He goes boom like that and a hundred people just go fucking flying. Okay, so if that's the case and a hundred people go fucking flying, 
then from that point, you think that you can't be funny, go out and get funny. Do the things that I've showed you in the video. I don't need to re-explain all here. Or, God forbid, www.hire, uh-huh, www.hirepurposeprogram.com and learn the basics of this stuff. Get in there, we're, we're pulling this thing down, we're subbing out with something super crazy next live. Super crazy, but this you gotta see, it's free. Okay, next one will be. So, higher purpose program, okay? So get in there now. Now, from the end, by the way, you wanna see it, you wanna make, you want me to make you laugh without even talking till you're crying? Come to this. I'll be the Benny Hinn of this for you, okay? I'll get you laughing till you cry without even, without even talking. If you come and see this and say that, say, come up to me at the start and say, hey, get me laughing. And I'll go, it's motherfucking on, baby. And I'll rise to challenge. And, you're, and, and I'm going to go, I fucking told you. I fucking told you. And as I do that, you're going to laugh even more, okay? Because I'll just look at you and you'll break out laughing. Why? Because I understand social skills, okay? As should you. God forbid you'd go out and learn them, <laughs> okay? Instead of sitting at home crying. So going from that standpoint, um, Go out and be what Seth Godin calls a purple cow. Okay, see, I can't out six pack, six feet, six figures, six inches, those guys, especially like a little one inch little thing going on, right? So as a result of that, I can't play that game. That's not a game that I can win. So I don't play their game. Okay, if I'm gonna make a watch, I'm not, I'm not gonna try to beat Apple Watch. Why are you trying to be fucking Apple Watch? If I can't beat Apple Watch, and I have to actually learn the mechanics of marketing myself, it's just too hard. So I'm gonna take the black pill. You just can't learn it, right? It's like, why? Why can't you just learn the basic? Like, forget all the pills. Just do the thing that Dan Kennedy did to drive hundreds of millions of dollars in sales. Do the things that I did to drive hundreds of millions of dollars in sales. Just win, like, just fuck the bullshit. Just start winning. Learn the underlying psychology. See, when I was in my early 20s and I heard about all the psychology, I was like, wait a minute. So I don't need to be a lightly autistic, complete fucking loser and I get to go live the life of my dreams and do whatever I want. Like, I just get to like live in mansions and travel everywhere and hang out with everybody, like do parties. Like, like I just do everything I want and I just learn the right psychology and I just do everything that I want and I'm doing this and nobody else is doing this. Fucking crazy. But people won't do it. They just don't want to do it. All good, baby. It's all good. Don't worry about it. It's all good. Don't worry about it. Just keep doing your thing. Just keep doing your thing. Just, just keep losing and sucking and, you know, just keep sucking. Yeah. Just sit down and just sit down and shut the fuck up, okay? Or you could win. What do you want to do? You got to make a choice, right? So understand the Dan Kennedy book. The Dan Kennedy book functions because it's fucking weird. By making it more shitty, it is peacocking, right? Try wearing something fucking stupid to the club that's outlandish and crazy. When you wear something, I learned this all from mystery, by the way. Would you guys like me to have mystery on for a podcast? Maybe we'll make that happen. So let's say that you were to, um, you know, mystery taught me this. Wear something that could get you beat up and own it so strong that people, go, people can't understand why you're not getting beat up. Try this as an experiment. Go out wearing a generic Tom Ford jacket that's like 70 grand. Then go out wearing a jacket like this with big ass, stupid, stupid ass fucking stars on it. Which one do you think gets a better result, okay? If I go out, what do you think gets me a better result? My Tom Ford, one of my Tom Ford jackets, a beautiful jacket, beautiful. Wear that for me. For me, Tom Ford jacket. But if, what's gonna get a better result? Some stupid ass big star, of course. Some bright ass color. Of course, we all know that. Everybody knows that's called peacocking, right? So why is that? Because you're not going to get your ass whooped for Tom Ford jacket. But some stupid ass jacket, maybe you're at risk getting your ass whooped. So as a result of that, people give you props. What if I wore an even dumber jacket? I got, look, I got jackets that are covered in just nothing but giant fur. And it's just like big, giant things of fur. You ever see me wear those? I have old videos where I wear those. And that's going to get by far the best result. Why? Because you get your ass whooped. So now all of a sudden, when someone meets you, it's like, well... How do they wear that and get away with it? Why don't they get their ass whooped? This must be a different kind of person. Now, what it does is, and here's another thing, it, and here's another key to the kingdom here, so pay attention. It removes the person's preconception of how to deal with you. So A, the fucked up brown paper bag means that it's, it means that it's peacocking because it sucks, so therefore you can charge more for it. But B, it removes their preconception how to deal with you. So you know, the typical person that someone's meeting 
the other person has an autopilot response. I'm gonna to get to know them. We're gonna to get to know each other, right? But if you're a little off the wall, there is no preconceived notion of how to meet you. There's no rule book for how to interact with you. So things can happen faster, they can happen slower, because there's, no there's no preconceived rule book. This is massive when it comes to sales. Look, you, you ever walk into a room, 30, 40 people in there, you walk out with say 100 grand in sales, two hours. Could you do that? Can you do that when someone has an autopilot response for you? Or do you do that when people do not have an autopilot response to you? They don't know how to deal with you. And they fall deeply in your frame because they do not know how to deal with you. And then as a result of that, you lead the way. That is how winning is actually done, okay? That's for people who get it, people who are masters, people who are results oriented, and people who care less about how someone might laugh at them and care more about getting that million bucks. And spoiler alert, a million bucks is not a lot of cash, okay? A millionaire these days is like 100 grand from when you're a kid, okay? Because of Biden. So, <laughs> okay, partially. So, let's get okay, a lot of reasons. Let's keep going. Okay, now the next thing is, and here's another element to it. What if the other reason why Dan Kennedy doesn't put a, a cover on that book is just because he doesn't care to? Think about this. Tip John. I'm just staring at the camera. Do a close up of the face. Okay, so, <laughs> okay, so I just like to stare at the camera. So, think about this for a minute. Come on. Lean into this a little bit. Think about this. What if he just realized it doesn't matter? What if he realized that there's just no point? So it's not, it's not even necessarily just to increase the value. It's just, it is completely pointless. What if you realize that? What if it's just that? So how does that, how does that manifest in social interactions? And so, right, by the way, we're one hour deep and this is gonna be the jewel of this talk. We're one hour deep. I'm, I'm gonna give you the jewel right here. This is for you if you suck in, okay? This is for you if you suck in. What if I told you that just by, by, that by removing the fluff, you would just have more time to make the stuff that matters better and more optimized. What if Dan Kennedy wrote a book that is so optimized for what actually gets results that it, the half hour that it would take to put on a cover, he'd rather put the half hour into the result. He just realizes that there's no point. Remember we said that you don't wanna work by the hour, you wanna charge for the result, right? In the same way, you don't wanna make a book, oh, we're charging for a book with this many pages, it's commoditized, it's for a specific result. Then he makes a sales ad for a very, very specific result, and what he does then is he so deeply hammers on the concept and the widget and the unique process and the pain points and the pleasure points and the features and the benefits and the framing of the deal and so on and so forth and the scarcity and he hammers on those things and he realizes that he's just gonna put the time into that. So this begs the question, what are the, what are the, what are the pieces, what, what are the, the mechanics that create that incredible pull towards you? What are the mechanics behind that? And so if you go get, and, and do this for yourself if you wish, but if you go get your college degree, does anyone really care? Is that really a difference maker? If you go from 14% body fat to 9% body fat, like, I feel like I get a little extra definition in my jaw. Well, yeah, I mean, if you're selling the, the $9 book or the $19 book, then make the cover really good. Like if that's, if the way that you're selling it is the conventional way, then I suppose the extra jawline definition is gonna be of some value. But that's if you're selling the $19 book, right? But what if you're selling the 30K book? If you're selling the 30K book, it's kind of neither here nor there. So what are, the, what are the mechanics that make this stuff work? What are the mechanics? Think about it, what are the fucking mechanics? That's what you gotta be familiarizing yourself with. What are the fucking mechanics?
So when you walk into a venue, how well do you understand the mechanics? And can you do so in a way that is authentic and vulnerable and real, but through an understanding of the mechanics? Now, when you see a rapper and a rapper goes in front of a crowd and they're loose and they're making very primitive noises and they're dancing in a primitive way and they're leading a crowd, they are the high fructose corn syrup of a human being socializing because now they've got a thousand people in front of them begging to go off to their after party because they're not fluffing like, what's your name? What do you like? Let's have a connection. Let's talk about my intellectual ideas. They don't care. They care about the things that worked 100,000 years ago. There are switches in the brain that are, they say that they're heuristical, so it's kind of like, if, then, this, if, then, this. It goes, eh, 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 eh. And then when you know how to ride those, it's called the primal highway. When you ride the primal highway, ride it, then what winds up happening is, boom, right in the core of the brain, similar to Luke Skywalker going the Death Star. Dun, 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 dun. Right, or that's, uh, what do you call that? Um, that's uh, Indiana Jones, right? Whatever the Star Wars song is. Right, right in the middle of the Death Star. This is going on. So a lot of socializing is about being authentic, vulnerable, and real because none of this stuff works if you're not. But there's the other side of it where you say to yourself, is this a boring, conver is this a boring conversation that I'm having? Like talking to a five-year-old that just wants some candy? Am I, you know, am I, am I, is, this, is this a boring conversation for them or for me? Like, is this, the, like, it's kind of like, you know, you go get your college degree. Like, uh, here's a funny thing, okay? Like, I, uh, I have this, um, this thing where like, you know, I run this business and people come to me and they say, they, they go, Owen, Owen, you know, I spent a decade getting my neuroscience degree or I, got, I spent a decade getting my psychology degree. Will this help me on YouTube? No, it won't. It doesn't. Okay, one of my favorite creators is called Sam Vaknin. Love that guy. He hates life coaches, probably wouldn't like me, but love the guy. Brilliant, genius. You're not watching him. Why? Because you're watching some bullshit instead of a fucking genius. But that's okay. It's okay if you like losing. <laughs> you hate money. You hate happiness. So you watch other shit instead of Sam Vaknin. And so Sam, he, uh, he actually does have a lot of all this like advanced academic credentials, right? And that guy's amazing. I appreciate it. I genuinely do. But he will spend half his channel complaining about something called self-styled gurus and aka me and and what he would say is um that the self-styled gurus get more views than he does on tiktok some fucking dummy screaming into the wind who doesn't even understand the academic terms gets more views than sam sam's actually done pretty well in spite of the fact that he's very academic i appreciate it i see the value i've watched almost the whole channel it's all about cluster b personality disorders um and, uh, but he, it's really about so much more. He's, he's really, really intelligent guy. So it's, it's really, you learn about cluster B, which is great, but you learn about so much more on that channel. But he's one of the few that has a, a advanced academic degree. Now, why is that? Here's why. Because people would rather watch somebody with swagger and good thumbnails and good titles and who is captivating than somebody with an advanced academic degree. It just so happens that Sam's actually got some swag going. He actually uh, didn't have that as much originally and he later got it, got more swag. People would rather watch the swag. That's what actually works. So if you were gonna be an expert on psychology, I think that it would be worth it for you to become an actual expert for you, for your sanity, for your authenticity, for your ability to sleep all the night. Sam Vaknin, S-A-M-V-A-K-N-I-N. I think that'd be worth it for you. But as Sam will tell you, it doesn't get him any more views. You just do it for you. I happen to go out and, you know, my version of academic study was I practiced social skills for about 40, 50 hours a week at least for two decades. Quite the split testing experiment. I didn't do that because it gets more sales. I don't think I, my sales benefited from that. I did that for me. I taught live events uh, 150 days a year to be the best teacher that I could be because I love teaching. I did it for the same reason that I love traveling in nature. I just love it. 
I do it for the same reason I like eating a, a grass-fed steak. I love it. I love going out. I love being the best teacher I could be. I'm passionate. But I never thought that that would get me more views at all. I just did it because I love it. So go become a not shit person because you sleep well at night, because it's between you and God. Do it because, it's, because some things are worth more than money. That's why you become a better person. But not because you're looking for somebody else to respect you for it. People respect swagger. People respect status. People respect authority. People respect social proof. People respect emotions. People, people, people respond to things that are very, very different than what you think they are. These things that you go build are for you. Go do them, absolutely. fucking lutely But don't say to your, you know, like for example, I do parties here, right? And I can, um, I can serve, uh, shitty Korean barbecue, or I could serve a grass-fed steak. And when I do that, I will find that people will kind of zone out, go unconscious, and shove the food down their throat. When I serve a beautiful grass-fed Wagyu steak here for a party, very few people are like, oh, this is a nice grass-fed Wagyu. No, they just go like that as they, as they just look fucking stupid. But the point is, maybe I just want to do it. Maybe I just feel good serving something grass-fed. Feels good to me. But I'm not expecting any brownie points for it. Most of these things that are fillers, don't expect any brownie points for them. They're just for you. Let, let me ask a question. You wanna make a great cover for your book? Do it for you. You wanna get a six pack? That's fine, do it for you. You, you wanna, you wanna um, um, have like a, a deep intellectual conversation with somebody? Do it for you. But make no mistake, or you wanna be nice, you wanna be a, a, a gentleman, do it for you. But make no mistake, when you're a gentleman, that is not in exchange for approval. The whole point of being a gentleman is that you're not doing it to get approval. The whole point of being authentic is that you're not doing it to get approval. You're doing it for you. Make an incredible product. You could get some word of mouth off of it. We get a lot of word of mouth, but I'm sure that if we could, we could dumb it down to shit and make it a lot more optimized. So when I do that, I do it for me. I run, if you've ever been to one of my seminars, I, I do free events for me. If you've ever been to one of my seminars, I often run them till eight in the morning. I don't think the audience needs me to run the seminar from 2 p.m. until eight in the morning. I do it for me. I love teaching, I love public speaking, but I'm not like, oh, you're, they're gonna like it more if I run till eight in the morning. I don't have to. It's not necessary to get someone the value. I could run for two hours, they're happy. So do things for you, but don't confuse that which you do for you with that which works. Don't go running around looking for approval for you being nice or a gentleman or authentic or vulnerable or high quality. You're not gonna get any approval for that. What you will get is your peace of mind. You sleep all at night between you and God, but don't think that that's gonna make a difference, okay? So know the mechanics that makes a difference. And the mechanics that make a difference are the things that the mind has been pre-programmed with for hundreds of thousands of years. Pre-verbal, before words were the main thing. Okay, so here would be my conclusion today. I could go into a, we're an hour and 12 minutes into this talk. I could go, uh, you know, I could go another hour and show you all this stuff. Or we could take the foundation that we built here, wrap. I'd recommend that you watch this video again to just get the, base, the, the basic points. Okay, but we can wrap now and we'll go deeper. We will go deeper. And this will be what the next course that I build will be about too. And we'll release that soon because the other courses are gone now. So we'll come out with a new course on it and it'll be on these topics, okay? And we'll show you all the mechanics of it and we'll go a lot deeper. So I'm gonna wrap up. I love you very much. Make sure, last day, last chance, www.higherpurposeprogram.com. We're taking that down, okay? www.higherpurposeprogram.com, get in there, all the basics. Make sure that you get out to a free tour this year. Next one's uh, this week coming up in San Francisco. A couple weeks after San Diego. Orlando will be a quick three hour one because I just want to take my kids to Disney World. Uh, but we also have Miami, there'll be three full days. Anywhere that you're at in the world, flying from Miami. We're gonna go out at night, it's gonna be a giant party, there's gonna be hundreds of people there, see people, it's gonna be sick. Miami's a crazy one. Denver will be another small one. First time I've been to Denver since 2015, probably last time I'll be there in my career. Uh, so make sure that you hop into Denver. Past that, we'll be doing Nashville, Charlotte, Atlanta, Seattle, Portland, Honolulu, Chicago, New York, Boston, Philly, D.C., Dallas, Houston, Austin, New Orleans, L.A.
And then guess what? We'll be calling that a free tour career because I'm going to be shifting to podcasts after that. And, uh, you'll be seeing some of my first podcast side videos coming out this week, actually. Uh, so love you very much. I really do hope that you got some value from this. These are, these are things that changed my life. I mean, my life changed in ways that I could never, ever, 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 ever have imagined by some of these understandings. And I hope that I threw a loop at you. I just, I, uh, by the way, I like to do different kinds of vibes and different kinds of, um, you know, presentation styles. So I just thought I'd make this one a little bit off the wall and crazy. Sometimes I do different styles. This is just a side. Let me know how you liked it. And, uh, Take the value, okay? Start thinking outside the fucking bun. Okay, hope you enjoyed it. Be back with more very soon. See you at a free event coming up. See you inside www.hirebirds program. We'll call it a night. Peace.